Okay, so they started us off writing acid-base reactions by giving us the reactant side and saying, complete this reaction. Now they're not doing that anymore. They're just giving us the reactants in described in English, and it's on us to write the entire thing. So, sodium hydrogen carbonate is soluble in water because pretty much sodium anything is soluble in water. This will break up into sodium ions and hydrogen carbonate, also known as bicarbonate, ions. And the question is what, oh, sorry, that's just the first reactant. And we also get sulfurous acid, which is H2SO3. That's what happens when hydrogen sulfite gets wet. And the question is what happens now? Well, we get into a bit of a bind here because either one of these could be an acid. They both contain hydrogen, so how do we know what to do here? It's You could maybe say that HCO3, because it's negative, is a much better candidate for a base, and that's true, because it could easily take up one more hydrogen and become H2CO3, and that is a good point. But we want a rule that we can trust consistently, and that doesn't require us to have a crazy memory for what species exist and which ones don't. So, in your data book, uh, what did I do with it? Here we go. There is a table of acids and bases and they are ranked from the strongest acid there is down to weaker, 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 and on the next page, weaker, 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 weakest. This might feel a little familiar to you if you remember your redox table where we had oxidizing agents and reducing agents. This table set up the same way. We have the strongest acid and then down, down, down. And then on the other side, we have the strongest base, OH, and then you can read up to find weaker bases. So this table is organized with the strongest acid. Let's use a brighter color. The strongest acid is perchloric acid, at least the strongest one on this list. And then the acids get weaker as you read your way down and they continue getting weaker as you go down the second page until you get to water, which is the weakest acid. It could give away a hydrogen, but it almost never does. Going in the other direction, hydroxide over here is the strongest base on this list, and then the bases get weaker as you read up the right-hand side. This also feels like something we saw in redox, and going this way, we eventually end up at the uh, hype the perchlorate ion, which is one of the weakest bases we know of. So, when you have a mixture of reactants like this and you're not sure which one's which, you can go to the table and use it to tell you which of these will be the acid and which will be the base. We have HCO3 and H2SO3. If we go to our table, we start up here, just like in redox, and we say, okay, I don't have this. I don't have this either. Don't have that, don't have that, don't have that, nope, 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 yes. H2SO3 is sulfurous acid. This will be our strongest acid. H2SO3 wins, it is our strongest acid. If we hadn't found that, we would have read all the way down the first page, and on the second page, very near the bottom, we would have found HCO3. So it turns out the hydrogen carbonate ion is a pretty feeble acid. There's only a couple that are weaker than that. So H2SO3, sulfurous acid, is much higher. It gets to be the acid in this reaction. Which thing is the base? Well, here's the strongest base. We don't have that, or that, or that. Don't have that, don't have that, don't have that. And here's HCO3. It is the strongest base in our mixture here. It gets to be the base today. In other reactions, this might end up being the acid just because it outranks everything else that's in the container, but today it is a base. What will it produce? Or what will this reaction produce? Well, if this gives away an hydrogen, then it should turn into HSO3 minus. Lose an H, lose a charge. And if this gains a hydrogen, it should turn into H2CO3. And the sodium was a waste of time because it 
doesn't really have acidic or basic properties, so I think in an acid-base reaction I wouldn't even mention it. As soon as this hits water, the sodiums break off and they don't do anything interesting after that, so out they go. Perchloric acid is HClO4. And it reacts with sodium carbonate. Now, a couple of things. First, sodium carbonate will break up into sodium ions and carbonate ions. So that's a better list of reactants. Another thing is, perchloric acid, if you look it up, is what we call a strong acid or a top six acid. On our acid base table, these six are called the strong acids or the top six acids. And what that means about them is that they are like infinitely, perfectly good at giving away hydrogen when you put them in water. When you put HClO4 in water, if you wait one second and then go in with a microscope looking for HClO4s, you will not find a single one because every one of them will have handed off its hydrogen to a water molecule. So the following happens very rapidly when you put HClO4 in water. First, it splits up into hydrogens and perchlorates. And then these hydrogens get picked up by water molecules. And so instead of H+, we get H3O. That happens in the blink of an eye. It happens 100% of the time. And so when you put HClO4 in water, we just automatically write these. You just don't get aqueous HClO4 because they just shatter as soon as they hit water, and these are the pieces that result. The H turns into this, the ClO4, there it is, and then we have our sodium and our carbonate. So this is the right way to start for perchloric acid plus sodium carbonate, and now we must decide what's our strongest acid, what's our strongest base. Well, clean this up a little bit. This doesn't exist in solution. It immediately turned into H3O, so we keep looking. Don't have that, don't have that, don't have that, don't have that. Ah, there you are. HClO4 very quickly downgraded itself to H3O, and this is going to be our strongest acid. This is what we write in our reaction. So H3O is our strongest acid. And no wonder it's the direct descendant of the strongest acid on the list. And now if we look for our strongest base... Uh, where am I going here? Don't have hydroxide, don't have phosphate, don't have hydrogen ascorbate. There we go. The carbonate ion is our strongest base. So that means the perchlorate and the sodium are not going to do anything. We could lose them from our reaction right now. The real story here is what happened when H3O met carbonate. Well, the acid is going to give away a hydrogen, which means it'll turn into water. The carbonate will acquire a hydrogen, so it'll turn into HCO3, and its charge will go from minus 2 up to minus 1. Nitrous acid is HNO2, and that reacts with... When this dissolves, we're going to get sodium, and you've probably noticed by now sodium never does anything in acid-base reactions, so I'm just going to ignore that. Hydrogen phosphate is the interesting part. Now, hydrogen phosphate is the HPO4. It's the one with only a single hydrogen on it. The other one they call dihydrogen phosphate, which is a little weird, but okay. So, those are our two species. You can see that either one of them could be a, an acid, theoretically. They both have hydrogen in them. So HNO2 and hydrogen phosphate. Who's our acid? Who's our base? HNO2, hydrogen phosphate, HNO2, hydrogen phosphate, HNO2. There we are. This is our strongest acid. Nitrous acid gets to be our strongest acid today. That would 
make this our strongest base. I could blip back to the... well, okay, I'll do this one last time. I'm trying to go a little faster, but still. Here's PO4, and here's hydrogen phosphate. They're calling that dihydrogen... oh, okay, this is dihydrogen phosphate, and then it turns into HPO4, so yeah, that's right. This is the strongest base in our solution. And so, when these react, the acid gives away a hydrogen and a charge at the same time. This gains a hydrogen and it gains a charge at the same time. It goes from minus 2 up to minus 1. Right. So, this was not a top 6 acid, so we didn't have to do that H3O thing. If you put HNO2 into a glass of water and then look at it with a microscope, you really will see lots of HNO2s. They tend to not give away their hydrogen until a base comes along and encourages them to do so. Okay, that's the last one here. Carbonic acid. Or no, it's not. We've got another... Okay, last one on this page anyway. Carbonic acid is H2CO3. Is it a top 6 acid? Uh, nope. So there's no need to instantly convert this to H3O. That may happen later, but it hasn't happened yet. And we're using that to neutralize ammonia, which is in H3. So, carbonic acid and ammonia. Carbonic acid or ammonia, where are you guys? Carbonic acid, ammonia, carbonic acid. <laughs> okay, no joy on the first page. Carbonic acid, ammonia, ding, here we are. Carbonic acid is our strongest acid. Automatically, that means this is our strongest base. And so, the acid gives away a hydrogen, HCO3 minus, and this gains a hydrogen and a charge, so NH4 plus. So ammonia turned into ammonium. Okay, Na2SO3. Sodium, once again, will dissolve off because sodium compounds dissolve very well in water leaving sodium ions, which we don't care about, and sulfite ions. Basically, in this unit, you can ignore sodium and potassium and all the group 1 elements whenever you see them, except hydrogen, of course, which is a very big deal. But sodium, potassium, uh, cesium, uh, francium, if you ever saw it, those pop off immediately, and, and lithium, will break off and be irrelevant as soon as they hit water. The sulfite ion is what we care about here. And then we have hydrogen fluoride, or hydrofluoric acid, sorry. Hydrofluoric, you see, is not a top six acid, so we don't, it doesn't instantly convert into H3Os. Okay. We don't need to go to the table for this one. Do you see why? If we're deciding who is going to be our acid and who is going to be our base, well, to be a, an acid, you must give away hydrogen, and this thing has no hydrogen whatsoever, so HF has to be our acid. You could check the table and read down the left and up the right, and you'll confirm that this is the strongest acid and this is our strongest base, but in this case we can eyeball it because only this one has hydrogen to give. So, what do they look like afterwards? HF loses a hydrogen and loses a charge also. SO3 gains a hydrogen and gains a charge. Sodium, yeah, don't care. Hydrogen carbonate is neutralized with hydrochloric acid. Is that a top six? You betcha. Hydrochloric acid is a top six acid, which means the following things happen rapid fire when you put HCl in water. HCl hits the water. It splits into hydrogen and chloride ions. Then a water molecule sees this and goes, don't mind if I do, collects that and becomes H3O. You don't even show this step when you're doing your reactions. When they say hydrochloric acid, you just immediately cut to yeah, that means H3O and chlorides. So, 
for this problem. They say hydrochloric acid, we say H3O and chloride ions. It's a top six acid, they're perfect at doing this. They do it 100%. So sodium hydrogen carbonate gives us this piece, hydrochloric acid gives us these pieces, and now if you look for your strongest acid and strongest base, here's the strongest acid. This is what H this is HCl turned into this. So that's our SA. Strongest acid. And if you look for bicarbonate, sorry, we're going up the right side now, so start at the bottom. We get this carbonate. And a short while afterwards, here's hydrogen carbonate. That's our strongest base. If we'd kept going a really long time, we would have gotten to chloride as our strongest base, but actually even before that you would have run into water. I haven't been doing that yet in these examples, and I probably should be. When you're doing your list of chemicals here, just like when you're doing a redox problem, technically water is a possible reactant, and in some cases if you're really not finding anything on your base table, you'll say, I don't have this, don't have this, nope, 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 nope. If you read far enough up your acid base table, nope, 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 you'll eventually find that water is your strongest base. And in fact, water is a better base than chloride is, which means chloride never gets a chance. Water always snaps up those hydrogens before chloride gets a chance to. So, in this case, the HCO3 is our strongest base. Not the chloride and not the water. Sorry folks, we won't need you right for this. What happens after this reaction's over? The H3O gives away a hydrogen, so it converts to H2O. This gains a hydrogen, and the charge that goes with it, of course, so it goes from minus 1 up to 0. And finally, an ammonia solution is mixed with nitrous acid. Ammonia is NH3. Nitrous acid is HNO2. Is HNO2 a top 6 acid? No, it is not. Nitric acid is, but nitrous is not. So, uh, these both contain hydrogen, so in theory they could both be acids, but uh, you might know already that ammonia is a pretty strong base, and the table will tell us that now also. If we start looking down our left side, HNO2 or ammonia, HNO2 or ammonia, HNO2 or ammonia, ding. Nitrous acid is our strongest acid. and that makes ammonia our strongest base. Now, sometimes we say that bases should have a, usually have a negative charge, and that's part of the reason that they attract hydrogen ions. That's usually true. It's not true for ammonia. This is one of the exceptions. This just happens to be highly polar. It's got a lone pair on the nitrogen that is strongly attractive to hydrogen ions, and so it's able to pull off being a base even without having a an actual negative charge. But it is an exception. For the most part, the it's got to be negative to be a base rule holds up pretty well. So what does this look like afterwards? Uh, our acid gives away a hydrogen, becomes the nitrite ion. The ammonia gains a hydrogen and becomes the ammonium ion. <sighs> there we go.